Houston. Good morning or good evening, Houston time. We have you uh, handed down uh, through Oak Hanger. And just in case we can't talk to you a little bit later, you do have a go from Houston and Moscow for the maneuver, the Geo 5.3 maneuver uh, at 1835. Okay, very good, Bill. Uh, gracious good evening to all of you there in Houston. And uh, thanks for the wake up music. It was real appropriate because we had the Russians in our wardroom last night, uh, Saturday night. Had a little barbecue and a little Max Q. Okay, you should see uh, Shannon uh, leading us into Mir up uh, through the docking module that you folks put on. And uh, all the walls of this compartment are uh, made of pile Velcro, which makes it very convenient. So one place in mirror where it's hard to lose things. When you lose stuff in mirror, it's real difficult to find it. These ventilator tubes that you see all around Shannon all have fans in them, and you can find some things on the intakes for them. That's real helpful. Shannon's going to stop here in just a minute after passing the narrowest part of mirror here in uh, Cristal uh, to show us a plant growth experiment called SVET, uh, which means flowers, that uh, has wheat uh, plants. And it's just in the last week uh, had some new growth uh, on, the, uh, on the beautiful plants. And it's just fantastic to see them growing into the sunlight up here. It's a real nice, uh, refreshing green color to have uh, aboard uh, the outpost up here. And uh, then we'll continue on through Cristal, going uh, towards the node, the central node, which is what makes all of this possible. It's a fantastic piece of gear that allows uh, modules to be docked to the various ports on it. And that's what's made the construction of Mir Station possible. Here we are getting into the node, and you can see all of the uh, hatches and docking adapters and uh, so forth right in the node itself. It's a kind of a busy place. We can look all around uh, the node. Shannon's going to take off here and get prepared for her exercise period. We're looking into uh, the pre rota module, coming here to the greenhouse experiment, which uh, John will be spending a great deal of time on. You can see an accelerometer mounted on the bottom of the greenhouse experiment here as we rotate the, what the designers thought would be uh, the proper attitude. Here's a French uh, vestibular experiment, the blue uh, equipment you see there that we've just flown over. Now we're going back to where we did uh, four of the five power transfers in the last couple of days. The biotechnology system, BTS unit, is here on uh, one set of lockers. We transferred that uh, with no difficulty as the first power transfer. Here's a French laser spectrometer called uh, ALICE. And here are the CGBA crystal growth units up in uh, the next set of lockers. And we transferred those. We've only got one more of the power transfers to go. Coming out of uh, pre uh we go back to the node through the hatch uh, that was used just a few months ago when pre -rota came on up. Take a uh, look around the node, uh, just to show you how, as you know, Bill, a confusing place it can be up there. Uh, there's no up or down, and you've got to follow your nose to get to the right place. And here's the orbit module of the Soyuz that has the scaphander or launch and entry suits that include now John's. Uh, the folks will be using that to come on back down here when Valeria and Sasha uh, land here in a few months. Shannon preparing for exercise here with the uh, help of, of Sasha, who's uh, the flight engineer. Uh, commander's eye view of, uh, of the control post there. That's where uh, they conduct most of their uh, air-to-ground sessions. Also got a viewport there in the center and a display similar to what we have on board the shuttle in order to do uh, control of the vehicle. Big white tubes on either side, as you can see, to, to carry the air back and forth and around the mirror, which is uh, a huge complex, 120 tons now. 
And once you get to that uh, that docking node, boy, it's real easy to get kind of confused. Uh, which way is up, which way is down, which way is quant, which way is crystal. Uh, but here we've wound up going into uh, Spectre. We're going to take a, a peek at, at John here. There we go. There's John. Uh, this is where Shannon did most of her work. Uh, the Spectre arrived while Norm was there, and he was the one that, uh, that had a chance to unpack it all. And then Shannon kind of set up uh, her laboratory in there until Pre-Rota arrived. You can see her balloon and, and her books there. John getting prepared to work here with his laptop and going through an awful lot of his inventory and, and getting set to to go to work with uh, some of the file management that comes up and down on, on their air to ground. Now the pretty uh, pretty pink tag there is intended to be red. That, that's kind of our signal on board that, uh, that Tom Akers devised, that uh, the, the red goes over to the mirror and, and the blue all comes back to us. Floating back towards the, uh, towards the node here. Sasha and I spend a lot of our mornings in uh, Quant 2. We both love photographing the Earth and looking out the windows. And you'll see why here in a second as we get through some of the uh, gyrodynes that help stabilize the Mir station and uh, into the compartment at the far end of Quant 2 that's their airlock that's used for their EVAs. Uh, here are their spacesuits, and there are three windows in Quant 2, and at any given time, generally there's one of them uh, facing the ground. It's a wonderful place to be, even though it's kept cold for a number of reasons, not least of which to keep the space uh, suits in good shape. There's our beautiful orbiter with a solar array sticking down towards it and our radiators uh, from one of the windows in Quant 2, and you can just see the solar array that came down right in front of uh, the commander's chair where our pilot Terry Wilkett was sitting during the rendezvous and uh, what an entertaining sight during the rendezvous. Now we had a really beautiful pass over uh, the New Zealand Alps not too long ago. Another picture, uh, this one uh, taken from the flight engineer's cabin on board the Mir station. You can see Jay zooming in a little bit to get a, a picture of the overhead windows. That's kind of what they were looking at while we were looking back at them during the uh, during the rendezvous and docking. A little bit wider view of them. It's spectacular. And here we are in uh, the base block where Shannon has started her exercise. And Sasha, the flight engineer, flight engineer one, John Baja being flight engineer two, is getting ready to uh, talk to folks on the amateur radio that they use there. And thanks for providing the docking module to us there. We appreciate that, Bill. Uh, we're going to make a, a turn here into the space hatch. kind of flying into the uh, into the hab here. You can see the uh, Orlon suit stowed down there at the bottom. And kind of panning up all our return bags with the blue labels. I'd like to know what's been the biggest surprise for you since you have become a mere cosmonaut, which happened a couple of days back. I guess the right answer to that is uh, I'm amazed at how quickly I have adapted to the mirror. I've never been on the real mirror before. It looks very different than the simulators I trained in. Um, and so at first I was a little concerned about that, but Valari here and Sasha, my two Russian crewmates, as well as Shannon, who spent uh, six months there, 
have really helped me out in the last three days, and I feel like uh, I'm very comfortable there right now. I had a great night's sleep, and I feel very good on the mirror right now. Tell me about the emotions that you were feeling during docking, the hatch opening itself, and now that you're back with astronauts again. Well, I guess the night before, uh, they were supposed to launch. It was sort of like Christmas Eve when you were a kid, you know what I mean? You just <laughs> you have a hard time getting to sleep, and you're just wondering um, just what's going to happen the next day. And then, you know, uh, just took it one step at a time. First of all, they had to dock, and that went just real fine. Then they had to have the hatch open. <laughs> I mean, because the docking wasn't any good, and the hatch didn't get open. And uh, everything just went along just great. And then finally, uh, you know, when the hatch opened and we met each other, then you could sort of start uh, thinking about going home. One of the first things you're going to be asked to do when you get home is make recommendations for improvements to Mir to make it more habitable for future crew members. What would you fix about Mir if you could? Well, I guess um, the first, uh, and basically the only suggestion that I would really have is just to have uh, more experiments to do because that's the fun thing to do, and uh, more is better as far as I'm concerned. Here, uh, when you when you go on it for the first time, John, and uh, if the atmosphere is clammy or anything, what's the what is it like in there? Uh, to tell you the truth, I've heard those comments before, but uh, I thought the atmosphere there was very similar to the shuttle. I, I, I find it very comfortable, and uh, what I was really surprised at is what I'm going to call the tremendous volume inside uh, to move around in. Uh, having been with the shuttle for so many years, uh, when I come back to the shuttle now, I, to me it looks smaller than I used to think it was. So the volume in the mirror is quite large, and... Uh, that's the most thing that I was impressed with. And no, I don't uh, smell anything in there myself. Well, that's good, I think. Um, I've got a couple more questions for Shannon that if uh, people around here have come up with. What are you going to do for an encore? Uh, obviously, it's going to take you a time, uh, some time to recover from uh, the effects of weightlessness for six months. Um, it, when you get back and talk to your bosses at NASA, what are you going to say uh, you'd like to do next? Well, first of all, someone would have to ask me if I <laughs> had a preference. <laughs> I would just like to have an interesting job. I mean, I just really enjoy working, and uh, I hope that uh, I just have uh, an interesting job. But right now, my vision of life, I guess, doesn't extend much further than landing and uh, saying hello to my family. Well, I can understand that. Uh, Shannon, did, were you able to see other satellites frequently as you uh, uh, orbited the Earth? And did you see space junk fly by at all when you had time to look out the windows? Well, once in a while, you can see a few uh, little flecks of, um, oh, I think it's like paint, something like that, uh, uh, coming off the mirror, and they would sort of sparkle in the sunlight, and you could see that. And as far as uh, satellites, I saw, you know, the moon a lot, and I saw a lot of the satellites of Jupiter a lot, but I didn't see any uh, artificial satellites very often. All right, quick final question for, um, uh, for Larry. It's a question about uh, Russian President Boris Yeltsin. His health has deteriorated. There's some debate about uh, open-heart surgery on him. A, Valeri, have you heard about this? And B, are you concerned about the health of President Yeltsin? Well, of course we are, are concerned about the health of the President and about any upcoming operations. But this is a strategic question. And, uh, we are uh, primarily concerned up here with the health of the crew at this time and the performance of the crew's mission. All right, Commander, thank you very much. Thank all of you for joining us on CNN today.